Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your chicks. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to Duke Nukem Time to Kill. I'm still Negaroth, and we are in the final time period of the game, Roman times. We are currently clad in our toga of choice, which is probably uh, very comfortable and form-fitting for Duke. And out in this plaza here is, uh, you know, our first ambush of the game, and I figured... I love holy hand grenades, I love throwing things and having things explode, and actually I didn't know it when I had first played through this level, but there's actually an even better reason to uh, blow stuff up out there, and that's mostly due to the fact that there is an atomic health that was hidden in one of the uh, destroyable little crates out here. The thing is, it's not really destroyable by normal bullets, you actually have to use something a little bit stronger to take it out. But yeah, uh, before we continue on through the level proper, it's, uh, nope. Fuck you. Yeah, there are there are a lot of enemies on the stage, uh, and I, th I don't know. Some of them can be a bit, you know, tiresome to take care of. Especially for some reason since they decided to replace the, uh, the heavy Drax that we'd seen plenty of times in the normal levels with the, the normal Drax, but, you know, let's listen to some one-liners. Who loves you, baby? Yeah, sadly for the most part, there. I think there was only one really uh, <laughs> Roman-specific, uh, or time period-specific saying that he will say. And it's not really that creative, so... You know, for the most part, at least, the, uh, the stage itself is interesting to look at. I mean, they... It, I guess it does a good job of, you know, being Roman-esque. But yeah, when I say there are a lot of enemies, I, I mean that there are a lot of fucking enemies. I think the stage has like 50 total enemies. How bizarre. Uh, yeah, from the, uh, what was it, OMD classic How Bizarre. Uh... Instead of actually being strange, we're actually just in a bazaar. But the uh, the bazaar itself is quite full of pig cops. Yippee ki yay! And uh, thankfully, they're pretty easily dispatched, especially with the laser Gatling gun and most of our weapons being pretty uh, built up at this point. But underneath this statue is our first uh, secret of the level by pulling the switch. We're able to open up a door behind this rather large Drax statue here. Not really sure why the aliens felt the need to start putting up statues of themselves, but whatever. And there are a few Drac in this secret, but they're easily dispatched. And we get some more freezer ammo, which we don't actually get a lot of in the game. And I think uh, that's another energy weapon. Oh, uh, yeah. And we get a double duke that we actually get some measure of usefulness out of because the uh, we're actually able to kill, I think, quite a few more guards in the, uh, the market here with uh, the double duke going. And this market is filled to the brim with value and, you know, toga-clad pig cops. I guess they would be pig centurions in this uh, nice point in history. Rest, fat boy, boy. But yeah, there. I mean, it's a, it's a rather small market. There's uh, not too much to deal with or actually look at, I guess. Apparently, uh, in 3D realms mindset, they uh, the only thing they had to sell in Roman times were vases. But you know, whatever. But yeah, from the last challenge map, we were able to get an upgrade to the flamethrower, and it's still awful. Uh, I'm going to try to use it to kill a few more enemies up ahead, but as you can see, it will tear through its ammunition pretty quickly, and it doesn't actually increase in damage at all, it just increases in its length. But it's still kind of hard to tell how far that the, uh, the flames actually go. So I'm not even really able to kill two or three pig cops before it's entirely out of ammunition. So 
Flamethrower is still an incredibly useless weapon. But before we continue on down that way, we actually need to go down this way to get the first key of the level and to actually see something of an interesting trap. That's right, lots of flame jets. And when I say lots of flame jets, I mean a fucking shit ton of them. I do pretty well navigating this uh, through this the this direction, but as we'll see on the return trip, I managed to mess up a little bit. But it's okay because the flames honestly don't do nearly enough damage for you to actually be worried about them. But I decided to blow up these uh, these bear or these uh, wicker baskets, I suppose, is what they look like. And, uh, guess what? They have absolutely nothing in them, so, you know, hooray for wasting a pipe bomb. But now that we have the key, we can, you know, retrace our steps back through the fire, and, you know, I don't, at this point I don't even fucking care. Fire does, like, next to no damage, so, whatever. But yeah, apparently the main point of all of this was to, uh, clear out, or to... I think in the pause menu, which I meant to look at, it basically said, um, you know, you need to take a bath or something, because, you know, Roman bathhouses, that's the only thing Rome was known for. At least, I guess, in the sexual field? I don't know. But yeah, we, uh, we uh, meet our yeah. second secret of the level, which is uh, steroids and invulnerability, and yet again, they actually place these in a semi-meaningful manner, because we can actually take out oh, yeah. most of the enemies in this room without, you know, having to worry about any damage. I still managed to lose the rest of my armor, but, you know, my health doesn't go down. And there's another armor right there, so what if? So by placing this key into this rather convenient keyhole here, we can swim down into the bathwater itself. And by popping out on the other side, we'll basically be heading to another key with some more fire traps. Thankfully, the the upcoming fire traps are a lot easier to deal with. They they kind of had this weird idea of difficulty on this particular level. I mean, the pit cops are still, you know, the same as they always been throughout the game, but I'm still not really sure why they decided to replace the uh, the heavy drac with the normal drac and why they uh, why they decide to really be pretty tame with uh, the traps overall. But with that key, we can now uh, go to the other bath as I slowly plod through the water. Just pop that key in there and harass another woman. Who's your daddy? All right, these Romans know how to party. That that is a very astute observation, Duke. But yeah, I'm uh, you know, we're almost done with this particular level. This is a nice little introduction, I guess, to at least to the aesthetic of the level. But for the most part, I think you know the game was kind of running out of steam, and I think it, I think they kind of realized that you know having four total enemies in the game probably wasn't really the best idea. Prepare for takeoff. But at least they have plenty of weapons, right? But by pulling that switch, we're able to backtrack a little bit here and obtain the, uh, the last secret of the level, which is actually a pretty nice secret if you're running low on ammunition. I was actually uh, a bit surprised to find that the, uh, they were still giving us throwing axes, as I thought the the axe itself was going Lock to be a, uh, a time period specific uh, weapon, yeah. like uh, the throwing knives, or the, uh, the buffalo rifle. But no, apparently they're also in Roman times, which, you know, makes sense. They had, they've had axes all through history. But now that we've gotten the last secret, we can continue into, I guess it could be considered a maze. It's it's really not, but you know, it's a it's a rather long twisting hallway with some very short dead ends. So it's it's more than a hallway and 
it's like unnecessarily long, so I guess to someone at 3D Realms this could have been a maze. And honestly, you know, Duke Nukem games have never really been good with maze ideas. But yeah, I guess some of the some of the uh, ambushes in here from the drag being where you wouldn't really expect them to be, which is behind you, could be a bit annoying, but, you know, since some of them end up dropping health either way, I'm never really too worried about getting overwhelmed or dying. Maybe if they were heavy drac, but no, they're not. But yeah, as we are now out of that very wonderful labyrinth, I'm actually going to pull off something I uh, failed to do in a previous level, which is using uh, throwing weapons properly. I was like, well, I still got one dynamite, or actually two dynamite left, and somehow I managed to not have that ricochet back in my face and blow me up. Even though nothing actually got killed by it, because apparently the two drac that were up here were taken out by the holy hand grenade itself. But, you know, I still felt proud of myself that I was able to, uh, to arc that properly. So yeah, with this uh, one last large body of water, we, uh, we have a very poorly hidden uh, atomic health, and we also have uh, some steroids that we'll go ahead and grab. We just, uh, we just have to do a little bit more swimming, and we'll be in the final room itself, so... You know, the steroids are always pleasant to uh, make us swim a little bit faster. And yet again, the, uh, the developers, in some attempts to hide Ju Duke's massive junk, have, uh, you know, changed the toga while swimming in the toga into more... You want some of this? Almost hammer-esque capri pants. So, um, that's a bit undignified. I think Duke would rather just have his junk hanging out in the water. But with these, uh, with these last few drac dead, we'll just go ahead and climb out of the water. Oh, camera kind of screwed up there, but that's kind of weird. But yeah, we'll just go ahead and climb out of the water, and that will be the end of this level. See you next time on more Duke Nukem Time to Kill. I came, I saw, I kicked ass.